Good morning, afternoon and evening to anyone listening to today's message. Thank you for joining to listen to you day 85. Today's message is titled, A Virtuous Legacy. Before we start, let us pray. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day you have given us. Father, I want to commit our hearts and minds into your hands um, so that we can understand the message that you're trying to convey to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, The scripture for today will be taken from Daniel 6 verse 4. The Lord says that they could find no ground of accusation or evidence or corruption in as much as he was faithful. Amen. Today I have a story. A man named Frank Hazel speaks about his grandfather Franz Hazel. Franz Hazel was an ordained Seventh-day Adventist minister in Germany. He was drafted into the army during World War II against his will and because he wanted to honour God's commandments um, thou shalt not kill he requested to serve in the medical corps and refused to use a weapon but his request was not granted he took his conviction not to kill so seriously that he carried a wooden gun and he thought he would die many times but God protected him over and over again so there was a story that Mr. Hazel used to tell his grandchildren So while he was serving in one of the units, um, he was assigned to search through the houses of every village. They were ordered to search for resistance fighters who would hide inside homes and attack the German troops. So they were told actually to shoot them immediately if they found a person hiding. So one day, as his grandfather was carefully searching a house, he had a feeling that something was unusual. He saw that nothing was there, it was empty. However, when he looked under the bed, he saw a young man staring right at him. And he knew that he had exposed this young man, but Mr. Hazel just left the room and didn't tell what he had found. He had pity on this young man and spared his life. Some weeks later, his grandfather was assigned to patrol an important railway truck. His duty was to make sure that there were no resistance fighters that would bomb the tracks. He was watching alone when a group of Russian people rapidly charged at him on their horses and there was no escape for him so he knew that he was surely going to die. So the group quickly encircled him and he was shocked to see the face of the leading commander. It was the same young man that he had seen hiding under the bed and They immediately recognised each other and the young man pointed his gun at the grandfather. However, he spared his life. Once again, Franz Hase's life had been saved by the loving kindness that he had and his faithfulness to God. Frank, his grandchild, so the person writing the story, expresses his gratitude for the virtuous life and the example of faithfulness and loving kindness his grandfather left behind. Today, this legacy can be his as well. And I believe that we can also learn something from it. There is something special or peculiar about faithfulness. Although you can be a little bit famous or a little bit rich, you cannot be a little bit faithful. Faithfulness has something exclusive about it that demands undivided attention. Either you are faithful 100% or you are unfaithful. If you are faithful 95%, you are not faithful but unfaithful. Faithfulness requires total commitment. God wants our undivided loyalty and full, complete dedication. We can read a similar story in the Bible, in the Old Testament. It's about Daniel, he was thrown into the lion's den because he was not willing to compromise his faith in God. When Daniel distinguished himself as a wise, dependable leader for the king, his enemies became envious and looked 
for ways to accuse him of wrongdoing. My hope is that our enemies, if we have any, and our friends and all those who have been watching our lives in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis will discover the same about us. May we be people who are known for the genuine, loving kindness we gently extend to others and may we be respected for our faithfulness in the day, daily things we do. And like Daniel, may we trust God to take care of us as we are faithful to his will. No matter what the future holds, let us be men and women who are kind to each other and who are faithful to God and his word. I have a quote from my favourite author and it says, It is not a conclusive evidence that a man is a Christian because he manifests spiritual ecstasy under extraordinary circumstances. Holiness is not rapture. It is an entire surrender of the will to God. It is living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is doing the will of Heavenly Father. It is doing the will of our Heavenly Father. It is trusting God in trial, in darkness as well as in light. It is walking by faith and not by sight. It is relying on God with unquestioning confidence and resting in his love. Amen. So this was taken from her book, Acts of the Apostles. Today we also have a few heart questions. How can you extend genuine acts of friendliness to those around you? In what areas do you find it difficult to be friendly to others and faithful to God? What are some specific ways that you like to grow in your faithfulness? Daniel is a good example of how one man's faithfulness to God influenced an entire kingdom. How might your friendliness help others see God's true character and how might your faithfulness to God open doors to show his faithfulness to those around you? Our prayer requests. Pray for more faithfulness in your life and for a heart that is always reflecting the kindness of Jesus. Pray for the Manor House, a wellness centre, a sanitarium in the UK, which is planning to run a post-COVID-19 convalescent program to reach people for Jesus through the health message. Pray for the needed government approval. Pray for the 1000 Missionary Movement Training Centre in North Sumatra, as well as all missionary training institutions to find ways to continue their ministry despite the COVID-19 pandemic. And lastly, pray for members who have lost loved ones to the pandemic or for other reasons. Let us pray. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for being with us, for providing the things we need and for continuing to be with us and helping us in this time of crisis. Father, I want to commit our lives into your hands. I pray that we can be more faithful to you and that we can commit to you. I also pray that we can always reflect the kindness that Jesus had. We can always reflect the life of Jesus and there are um, things that we need from you that we just pray that you do for us because it would just mean a lot to us. I also pray for any people who have lost their loved ones due to this disease. Father, I pray that you help them to mentally and physically cope with this situation. And I pray that you continue to be with us, Father, Thank you once again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.